as you may guess from, from my accent, I haven't, uh, I'm not from New Zealand originally. Um, we've been here a year, and my family and I really, really um, have come to call this place home. And it's been a real privilege for me to be involved in this uh, journey of this Te Tauhiu intergenerational strategy. Um, and in my previous life, before I came here, one of the things that I was involved excuse me, involved in, was non-financial reporting, um, integrated reporting, sustainability reporting. Um, so my big idea is that we should see massively increased levels of non-financial disclosure by companies, councils, iwi, um, any organization that can make a difference. Um, and obviously, we know that the, that will cover environmental stuff around our carbon footprint and our water use and our ecological impacts. It'll cover social issues that, that we've explored, uh, you know, some of those we've explored in great detail. Um, everything from employment to labor, um, occupational health and safety, community engagement, living wage, etc., etc. Governance stuff around management and oversight, and then, of course, the normal standard financial bog standard reporting of profits and loss and balance sheets, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, you know, I was thinking about this, and there are lots of frameworks out there to do it. It's not rocket science. We don't have to start from scratch. Um, there's Global Reporting Initiative and Integrated Reporting uh, Council. Um, there's also, more, more interestingly, and, and I've worked a little bit in this space, is there's increasingly um, good cloud-based, IT-based models whereby you know, even a small business or a small organization can plug in their data and it spits out a result, a report. It'll even write your draft report for you and then you just put your, put your, your logo on it and put your pictures in and uh, you know, make it look like yours. Um, so yeah, so, and now all that stuff exists, but you know, the uptake of it is not really where it needs to be. So how do we change that? And that's really the, the, the center of this idea. Is. Um, if we put in the right incentive, sticks and carrots, so if from, from, the, from a carrot point of view, there's some financial assistance from councils, from companies, there's mentorship from companies that do this already to smaller businesses. To, and, and I mean, here in Picton, we have lifestyle businesses, um, that are, are in the tourism sector, you know, New Zealand's got a lot of small businesses, um, and it's really not always easy for those organizations to find resources to do this stuff. So there's a whole bunch of ways where we can incentivize them to do it. And if, you know, from a bit of a stick perspective, if we make this part of the procurement um, processes of councils, of Wakatu, uh, you know, and its associate businesses, of some of our big corporates, um, you know, or, or or the chamber uh, uh, presidents aren't here, but if we make it a precondition for membership of the chambers, you know, that, that's a big stick, that's a big incentive. So yeah, so, and what that does is it gets us away from this thinking um, of annual results or quarterly results or whatever the case is, and it starts us thinking long-term and hopefully starts us thinking intergenerationally. So, you know, I wanna see coming out of the um, Te Tauhiu intergenerational strategy is an intergenerational reporting project. Um, under, as, and we've discussed this with Mariana and Tina. We, we, we think we should have a Teo Marama Institute. So that's my big idea.